What's going on, YouTube? We're back again. I got another video for you guys. If you would have told me a couple weeks ago that I'd be making videos again, I don't know if I'd believe you too much. But here we are. I'm out here at Lake Wilhelm. This is the first time I've been here, I think, since July. Uh, which is kind of crazy because this, uh, the last year was one of my favorite smoke spots. But for some reason this summer, I just haven't been making it out this way. But today couldn't be a more beautiful day to be out here on the lake. If I had a boat, I would be on the lake, but I don't have a boat, so I'm sitting in my car. <laughs> today we're going to be smoking some W. Larson Selected Blend Number 80. I picked up this tin at the Columbus Pipe Show. I have no idea how old it is. There's no date on the bottom of it or nothing, so there's really no way to tell as far as I know. Um, I know if you search it on tobacco reviews or if you Google it, it comes up as W. Larson's Mahogany Mixture, not the selected blend number 80. So I'm guessing it's a pretty old tin, but I'm not certain. Uh, the smell with it being an aromatic, it smells, I think it's the perfect fall blend to be perfectly honest. Uh, it smells like dead leaves, molasses, and maple. It's exactly what it smells like. It tastes like it, smells like it, everything. It is, it's really a terrific blend. It kind of reminds me of a, a Germain's blend. Kind of has some, uh, the uh, dark Cavendish, if anybody's ever had that. It kind of has uh, that quality of tobacco, if you know what I'm talking about. It's very similar to that. Uh, I'm going to be smoking some of that in my 336, my Iwan Rees 336. I'm sure some of you guys have seen this pipe before, uh, but that's what we're going to be smoking her in today. Uh, and what we're going to do here is we're going to pack it, we're going to get her going, and we'll see if I have anything to say. We'll be right back. You know, this really is a good blend. I really hope I can get my hands on some mahogany mixture. Everything I've seen online, though, says you can... It's only sold overseas. So, I don't know if I really want to spend the money to get a tin of it and then pay for all that shipping to get over here. So, hopefully I can figure out some other way to get my hands on it. Maple syrup molasses and dead leaves that's all you taste but not like uh aunt jemima's maple syrup if that's even still a thing um more like a homemade maple syrup it's the only time i've ever seen this blend only time i've ever seen this tin so it's it's very interesting um but the reason why I came out here today, the reason why I decided to record this video. For the last 13 years, I've been on borrowed time. And I'll explain why. 13 years ago, I would have been 9 years old. My grandparents, my stepdad's parents, they own a cabin up in Warren, Pennsylvania. Bear country. So one weekend we went up there, it was me, my mom, my stepdad, my sister, my grandparents, my aunt and uncle and their two kids, my cousins, or at least I believe, pretty sure they were there. One of the mornings we were up there, I woke up around 5.30, 6 o'clock, I had to go to the bathroom. Now what was great about this cabin was at the time it had no indoor plumbing. So there was an outhouse. So you had to go outside to go to the bathroom. Now as a nine-year-old boy, I was over the moon with that. Nothing made me happier than going outside and going to the bathroom, whether it was in the outhouse or not, you know. So this morning I got up, walked outside, it was still it was still a little dark out, not much. Sun was starting to come up, uh, surrounded by trees, so it got to us a little bit later than normal. 
you know, went to the bathroom, did my thing in the outhouse. Now, what was great was the cabin was here. There was a shed here and the outhouse was over here. So there was almost like a walkway to get through. So you had to walk out of the cabin, walk to the right of the shed, and then the outhouse was behind it to the right of the shed. On the other side, the left of the shed, there was a fire pit and they had a bunch of bird feeders. And I think one of them was like an Oriole feeder or something that had jelly in it. I might be making that up, I don't know. So I come out of the outhouse I walk up to the shed and I hear something. It sounds like something's really shaking the bird feeder. I was thinking squirrel or something and being a curious nine year old, I walk out around the shed and I look over and there is a giant black bear. Nine year old giant black bear. To me, it's, you know, giant black bear. Now at this point, being nine years old, I didn't know very much about bears. I was still under the impression that if you saw a bear, you were essentially a dead man. I didn't know that black bears were typically more afraid of people than we are of them. I didn't know that grizzly bears were the ones you really had to watch out for. I didn't know anything about polar bears just wanting to eat anything they see that's meat. I didn't know nothing. I thought that all bears would kill you the second they saw you. So I come walking around the shed and I see this black bear and my heart stops. I throw myself up alongside the back of the shed, hiding from it. And for about three minutes, I just stood there <laughs> trying to figure out what I was going to do. And I knew the bear was still there because I could hear it still going to town on this bird feeder. Now, this was the back side of the cabin. The front side of the cabin, there was a little front porch with the front door that you could walk through. I knew my parents were sleeping in the living room just inside from the front door. So I knew that if there was any way I was getting out around this bear, I couldn't go in the front door because it was going to see me. And in my mind, I'm dead if this black bear sees me. So I'm thinking I have to run and book it as fast as I can to the front door and get in there and lock it behind me so the bear doesn't get in. So I'm sitting there for three minutes. This is what I'm thinking. Crafting a plan. How am I going to get out around this black bear? Well, finally, I build up the courage to take off. I take off full speed to the front door, get in the front door, close it, slam it, wake my parents up. You know, there's a bear, there's a bear. They don't believe me. They're like, it's six o'clock in the morning. Why are you waking us up? There's a bear? What are you talking about? I eventually convince them, tell them. They get up, they come out and look out the back door. And sure enough, this black bear is still standing there shaking this bird feeder. And I'm telling them, I don't know. I don't know how I'm alive. I don't, I don't know how I made it. It's a miracle. All this. They're like, what are you talking about, dude? That black bear ain't going to get you. It's more afraid of you than it is a, than you are of it. I, I don't think that's possible. I've, I'm experiencing uh, heart failure as, you know, still alive, but I think I'm dying. So they wake everybody else up in the house. They come down. Everybody's looking at this black bear. My stepdad gets a couple pictures of it. I don't know how long it took me to calm down, but I was certain I was going to be dead that day. One of the most terrifying moments in my life, for sure. All for nothing, because I, did, I didn't know that bears were cool. Or at least black bears were cool. Another time, I don't think it was the same trip. But it was at the same uh, cabin. We were up there, we were having a fire. Uh, there were a lot of bears in this area. And with there being a good amount of cabins up that way, uh, a lot of people set stuff out and ended up feeding these black bears. So the black bears, some of them became a little too friendly. Uh, they weren't fearful. They would actually come up and just kind of sit with you. Not like buddy-buddy, you know, arm around it, nothing like that. Nothing a uh, man's best friend type deal. But they'd kind of come up somewhat close uh, and they'd sit. Well, the campfire's here and our chairs are on the outside of it, closer to the house. Um, and then there was a wood pile 
on the other side of the fireplace or fire pit rather. Well, one night we're sitting there. I think we were cooking s'mores or something, hot dogs, whatever. We're all sitting there talking, having a good time. And we hear something coming up through the woods. Now, this is it's dark. It's probably, I don't know, 9, 10 o'clock at night. And uh, we hear something coming up. And we see eyes. We see two eyes. And we know it's a bear. Just from how high it is off the ground and all that, we could tell. And we knew there had been one that was coming around that was pretty friendly. So we were kind of on the lookout for it anyway. And it came up right on the opposite side of the wood pile and just sat down and stared at us. Just hanging out. Nothing too crazy. My grandpa ended up getting up and kind of spooking it off with a stick. Because, you know, it's a black bear. You never know. But, uh, yeah, I don't, I think that was after. That was definitely after I thought I was going to get mauled to death by a black bear. But I've only seen a couple black bear in my lifetime. I saw the one that I thought was going to kill me, the one that sat down right next to us. Uh, we went to Gatlinburg, Tennessee one year. We were uh, packing everything up to head home. I believe we were getting everything packed up to head home. And uh, we all went back up to the house to make sure that we had grabbed everything, that everything was good to go. But they, we put our food in there last, our snacks and stuff like that. And uh, the back hatch was still open on, I think, all of our vehicles. Not mine. I was, you know, I don't know, 12, maybe 13. So I wasn't driving. But uh, we went up. We happened to just, somebody looked outside. I don't know who it was. And there was this, the biggest black bear I've ever seen. This giant black bear came walking down the road. Walked right up to all of our cars. It was sniffing. I don't know if it took any food or not, but I do remember seeing it. And it was massive that it was probably two to three times the size of the one that i thought was going to kill me and i remember thinking like if i would have saw this black bear i probably would have just had a heart attack i probably wouldn't even thought to run away now one thing about this 336 i've been smoking it since uh not this past year's pipe show that just happened uh, a month ago. Last year's pipe show, a year and a month ago. Uh, I've smoked this pipe probably two to three times every day since. And there's a pretty good layer of cake in there. So I, I got to clean that out to get this pipe going a little bit better. But since the pipe show... Since I got all my other pipes, I haven't really been hitting this one too often. I've been trying to work all the other ones into rotation and get them pretty well worked in. That pipe cleaner sucks. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Just figured I'd come out and share some bear stories. I haven't seen one in quite a while. I don't know the last time I would have seen one. Maybe, maybe it was Tennessee. But... It's a very cool experience uh, seeing a black bear, especially when uh, you know you're safe. That's probably the best when you're not nine years old. I think I probably peed myself again. I went to the outhouse. I think on the way back through, I definitely peed, peed again. But I don't know, a quick little video. Yeah, this is a quick little video. We'll see you guys later.